Hi everyone, Nick here, welcome back. The backdoor Roth IRA is one of the most powerful tax strategies for higher income earners. Even if you aren't a high income earner, now it's very important to be aware of and plan for this strategy so you can use it as your income grows. Leveraging this strategy could result in over $1 million of tax-free growth by your retirement. It is that powerful. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how this strategy works, some common pitfalls to avoid, and I'm going to show you how I reported this on my tax return. Before we start, there are two different backdoor Roth IRAs. There's the normal backdoor Roth and the mega backdoor Roth. This video will focus on the backdoor Roth, and I'll make another video on the mega backdoor Roth. If you get value from content like this, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to support free financial education. So an IRA is short for individual retirement account. Real briefly, the contribution limits that you can put in per year if you're under 50, $6,500. If you're over 50, you get to put $7,500 in. You must earn income of this amount to be able to contribute to an IRA. And you can contribute for a spouse with your income if they aren't working. The first type of an IRA is a traditional IRA. This is typically called a tax deferred account. You would typically get a deduction when you contribute to the account, avoiding taxes at that point, if you're below the income limits, then money in the account would grow without tax, but then you would be taxed in retirement when you take money out of the account. The income limits are currently 73,000 for a single person and 218,000 for a married couple filing jointly. Now, partial contributions are allowed above these limits, but they quickly phase out and become ineligible, maybe within another $10,000. For purposes of this video, we're gonna use the lower limits. The next type of account is a Roth IRA. Now instead, this is called a tax exempt account. You pay taxes on your money before you put it into the account, but then it grows tax-free and you can withdraw it tax-free in retirement. It's a very powerful account, but in order to contribute, you must be under the income limits. So for a single person, that's 138,000. For a married couple filing jointly, it's 218,000. Even if you are not over these income limits now, you should plan on being over them in the future. At one point, I never thought I would exceed these limits, but it actually happened pretty quickly, and I was glad I planned for it. So real quickly, to illustrate the power of the Roth IRA, a couple maxing out this account for 30 years with a 7% annual return, which is roughly the historical inflation-adjusted return of the S&P 500. After 30 years, they would have contributed $390,000, and they would have received $838,000 in tax-free growth, totaling a $1.23 million account roughly after 30 years. Now, with this account in retirement, this couple could be generating a 5% return, which might be yielding $61,400 in a tax-free return every year, or with a 7% return, nearly $86,000 in tax-free income per year. Now, if you make it under the income limit, you don't need to do the backdoor, and this is still very powerful. However, you should be concerned that when you grow your income to a certain level, you may lose the ability to continue leveraging this strategy. A lot of people end up ignoring this and end up in a situation where it's quite costly to use the back door. I'm glad I planned ahead and made sure to keep it simple to take advantage of this. My income exceeded the limit far faster than I would have guessed. I've seen some people say the backdoor Roth is not really worth the hassle. Before we talk about how much of a hassle it actually is, I would ask yourself a couple questions. How much effort would you be willing to put in to get this result? One hour? Five hours? 20 hours? Would you be willing to spend an extra one hour per year to get this nearly $838,000 in tax-free growth and over $50,000 of yearly tax-free returns in your retirement? I would personally be willing to spend a lot more than one hour, 
But that's about all I think it takes me in a year. The key to the backdoor Roth is the non-deductible IRA contribution. This is done using a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA in combination. How it happens is you make a non-deductible contribution to a traditional IRA. You can do this regardless of your income. Then once the money's in that account, it's not deductible, so your cost basis is whatever your contribution is. And then it can grow tax-free until you withdraw in retirement, at which point you would just pay taxes on your gains. But instead of letting it grow in this account, you can leverage the back door. Here's how this works. In this image, we have the tr deductible traditional IRA here. That's where if you're below the income limit, you could take a deduction and leverage that. Or you have the Roth IRA, or if you're below the income limit, you can contribute directly to that and leverage it. But if you're over these income limits, you can make non-deductible traditional IRA contributions. And this is the back door. Once it's in that account, you can convert it to a Roth IRA. So there are two fairly simple steps to the backdoor Roth IRA. You make a non-deductible traditional IRA contribution. I recommend you don't invest with this contribution in the traditional IRA. You wait a day or two until your broker lets you convert it to a Roth IRA. And any growth in the meantime would be taxed. Or if you had a loss in the meantime, if you did invest in the traditional IRA before you converted it, these can complicate the tax reporting. To simplify this, I would just leave it in the settlement account in the traditional IRA, leave it out of the market for an extra day or two until you do the conversion. It'll greatly simplify things. Now we're gonna talk about two common mistakes that people make when they're doing the backdoor Roth. First is called the pro rata rule. This is a special rule that says that Roth conversions must be taken equally from all IRAs. This includes traditional rollover IRAs, this includes simple IRAs and SEP IRAs. So basically, if you have any of these IRAs and you have a good amount of money in them, they'll get in the way of your backdoor conversions. Let me walk you through an example of how this would be affected. So let's say you have a traditional IRA from a prior employer's 401k that's tax deferred and you have $25,000. Now let's say you wanna do a backdoor Roth of $6,500. So when you look at your total IRA assets, you have $31,500, almost 80% of it is tax deferred and traditional. And if you convert that money, you would owe taxes on it. And then the back door, your non-deductible IRA contribution would only be 20%. So based on the pro rata rule, if you try to convert $6,500 through the back door, you would have to pay taxes on $5,161, which would be converted from your traditional IRA bucket. Not 5,161 in taxes, that would just be your taxable amount of the conversion, roughly 79.4% you know, of the conversion. And then the back door that you were trying to do, you would only get that tax-free conversion on the $1,339. So hopefully you understand how that works. To avoid the pro rata rule, you basically don't want to have any IRA accounts. Now, a lot of people, conventional wisdom says to roll over 401ks from prior employers to traditional IRAs. The problem is this triggers the pro rata rule. So there are different options you have to avoid this. I made, I discussed this in my video on 401k rollover options, which I'll link up here and below. But real briefly, you could leave the 401k with the prior employer you could potentially choose to just convert it to a Roth and pay taxes to get it out of the way. If it's a small enough amount, you can afford to pay the taxes. You could roll over your rollover IRA into an employer 401k for your new employer if the plan is good and they accept those rollovers. A little more complex option is to open a solo 401k, also known as a Keo account. Now this 
can be done by self-employed people. Anyone can really be a self-employed person with a sole proprietorship. You can register for a business tax ID on the IRS's website and use it for things like business credit cards or to open a solo 401k. Now this comes with some potential complexity and additional tax reporting and following rules for which you could have to pay hefty fines if you don't do it correctly. But it is an option if you're willing to go through that. Maybe you're self-employed and you want to do it anyways. One benefit is your spouse can also use your solo 401k. So you could actually use this for rollovers from both of your prior employer's retirement accounts. One unfortunate thing, if you happen to work for a company with a simple IRA, it's a pretty nice account, but it can get in the way of the backdoor Roth conversions. So be aware of this and plan accordingly. You might have to choose between leveraging that account, being able to do the backdoor without paying some tax. Um, that's really something you'll have to consider. So another common mistake is tax filing. It is a little bit of a confusing process. And the tax software will sometimes show you that you owe taxes on the conversion until you enter it correctly. So I'm going to walk you through my tax return from this year for my backdoor Roth conversions or for your 20, the tax year 2022. So you will receive a 1099R or you'll need to download it from your broker. If you're a couple and you're both doing the backdoor conversions, you'll each receive one of these. Then you'll have to fill out an extra form on your tax return 8606, which is used for non-deductible IRA contributions. And again, for a couple, you would both have a separate 8606. The IRA distribution will show in other places on your return, such as field 4A on the 1040. The tax software or your CPA should really help you get this reported correctly in all the right places on your tax return. But I will briefly walk you through the most important parts that I know about. Here is my Form 1099-R from 2022 from Vanguard. The contribution limit was lower last year at $6,000. And you can see that they reported a distribution from the IRA of $6,000. Now, a couple of the confusing pieces on this form is it says the taxable amount is $6,000, which is actually not really true because in 2B, it says the taxable amount is not determined. And that's where using the other forms and worksheets from the IRS comes in. And the tax software should help you with that. I think it's also important that seven is checked correctly and, and recorded line seven there typically done by your broker. Here's form 8606, which is used to report non-deductible IRAs to the IRS. You should rely on your CPA or tax software to really get this correct. Don't rely on what I'm showing you here, but this is what my tax software generated for me last year, TurboTax. Now I copied this in here manually because I don't want my name and social security and so forth here, but they put 6,000 in my non-deductible contributions and I didn't have any other IRAs, uh, traditional IRAs. And then I also didn't have any traditional SEP simple IRAs. Um, so if you have those, you would probably have to fill out these fields and figure out the taxable portion of your conversion like we did in the example before where it was about 80%. But for some reason, publication 590B talks about the process of filling in these fields and reporting non-taxable distributions. And if your tax software is using this worksheet method that's described here, it does say in these instructions to not complete line six through 12. So I think you probably could fill it in. I would personally rely on my CPA or the tax software to do it. Um, but based on my readings of these different publications, and apparently TurboTax doesn't think so either, I didn't need to fill these in and put zero and, and so forth in these fields. And then we just get the total non-taxable portion of the distributions is 6,000, which I think comes from the worksheet. Again, don't rely on my explanation of this to get this right. Make sure you read the publications yourself in this form. 
and really understand it yourself or rely on the tax software or CPA to get it correct. Well, that was a little confusing to me when I first saw that. And I was like thinking the tax software may have filled this in correctly and I was gonna get a notice from the IRS. But after doing some additional research, it does look correct to me. So those are the two common mistakes that people make when they're doing the backdoor Roth. They get hit with the pro rata or they report it incorrectly on their taxes and maybe they have to go back and forth with the IRS to fix it and file some corrections. Now this is a very powerful strategy. We saw the couple maxing out these and earning a 7% annual return could have easily earned over $1 million in tax-free income. You wanna plan ahead. You don't want to close the door. You wanna leave that back door open and avoid non-Roth IRA accounts if possible. You wanna set yourself up to do this five, 10, or even 20 years from now, even if you're under the income limit now. You wanna plan ahead and not start building up a bunch of other traditional IRA or simple IRA assets. You wanna keep this back door open. And finally, you wanna make sure your tax return is correct. I just shared details of how I reported it. Everyone's tax situation is different. Make sure you consult a CPA if it's necessary. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments below if you're doing the backdoor Roth conversions or you plan on doing it in the future. If you got value from the video, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to support free financial education. Later.